you may have all heard of hypnosis you may have seen some magic tricks on stage hypnotists making people do things that they don't really want to and you may have formed some ideas about what hypnosis is but i'm here to tell you today that most of what you've seen or heard of is probably wrong so what is hypnosis what happens in the brain when someone is hypnotized and is hypnosis actually useful to you that is what we're going to talk about in today's video. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Siddharth Warrior. I'm a neurologist and welcome to my YouTube channel where we talk about neuroscience and everything. In today's video, we are going to deep dive into the fascinating world of hypnosis and the neuroscience behind it. And I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, Reverie, which is the world's first self-hypnosis app founded by Dr. David Spiegel, a Stanford professor of psychiatry. So what is hypnosis? Hypnosis is a state of heightened focus and concentration where you are more open to suggestions and you are more open to experiences. It is often described as a trance-like state but it is important to know that you are not unconscious and you are not in someone else's control. In fact, you are fully aware and in control of your actions but your brain is just more open and receptive to suggestions and experiences. So how does it work? What is the neuroscience behind hypnosis? There are three main things that happen in the brain when someone goes through hypnosis. And they happen in three separate areas, the prefrontal cortex, the anterior cingulate cortex, and the default mode network. So what happens in these three areas? Let's talk about the prefrontal cortex first. The PFC is responsible for executive functioning, that is logical thinking, decision making, problem solving. This is also the part of the brain that says no when we have a spontaneous impulse to do something. Studies on hypnosis have shown that this part of the brain becomes less active, allowing someone to let go of their inhibitions and become more open to new ideas and suggestions. The second area, which is the anterior cingulate cortex, is usually responsible for self-monitoring and conflict resolution, which means that when your brain is confused between two different ideas, the anterior cingulate cortex steps in and resolves that conflict. In hypnosis, it is noted that the ACC activity goes up. This may explain why people in hypnosis are able to dissociate from their old patterns of thinking and embrace new patterns of thought and experiences. And finally, another area very important in hypnosis is the default mode network, which is usually responsible for mind wandering or self-referential thought, which means when you're relaxed and your mind is wandering or you're just thinking random things about yourself, that is when the default mode network or DMN is active. In hypnosis, the DMN becomes more active, contributing to that trance-like state of calmness and the ability to think about yourself in a different way. Interestingly, some studies have also shown that in hypnosis, the brain's motor and sensory areas can also undergo change in activity, which means that the way you perceive sensation like touch, smell, taste can also change in hypnosis. So this can play a very important role in how you perceive the environment. Now, after hearing all of this, some people may be cynical about hypnosis or they may be scared about what hypnosis can do to you. So to answer these questions, I got on a call with the founder himself, Dr. David Spiegel, who is one of the world's leading experts in hypnosis. And I asked him this very question. And this is what he had to say. It actually started out um, as the oldest Western conception of a psychotherapy said. The first time a talking interaction between a doctor and a patient was thought to have therapeutic potential. But somehow, uh, because a number of the leading pioneers in hypnosis wound up uh, having serious and damaging confrontations um it got left to the to magicians and stage show hypnotists and things like that so uh it, it it's sort of like what would have happened to pharmacology if snake oil salesmen were the only ones left <laughs> pushing drugs 
Now, many studies have shown how self-hypnosis can be a useful tool in managing medical conditions like anxiety, post-traumatic stress disorder, eating disorder and sleeping problems. It can even help with de-addiction that is letting go of habits like smoking or drinking. So clearly this is a tool that we haven't used enough and more and more studies are coming out to show the value of adding this to our arsenal. So if you want to try out hypnosis, how can you get started? One of the safest and easiest ways would be to use Reverie which is a self-hypnosis app. I've been using Reverie for the last one month to improve my sleep quality and it has been a wonderful experience. I've added a link below for you all to check out Reverie. There's also a free subscription available for the viewers of this channel. I hope you'd make use of it. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel and I will see you all in the next one. Bye everyone. Take care.